Thanks. You're on deck. Oh, welcome to this meeting of the uh, Milton Planning Board. It's already our 15th meeting of the fiscal year, and we're still going strong. Uh, why don't we go around this full table and introduce ourselves? I'm Alex Whiteside, the chairman. Edward Duffy, member. Michael Kelly, member. Brian Furs, member. Emily Martin, admin. Bill Clark, planning director. Emily Ennis, member. All right. Now, uh, Ed, you want to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to say a few words. I wish to say a few words about the site of the old theater slash new restaurant. Franklin Street, Adams Street, Church Place, Mechanic Pierce, all the way to Granite Place on one end and Granite Avenue on the other end. I've, I've been a member of the planning board for approximately 12 years. During that time, I estimate that we've had maybe six or seven, quote, traffic and parking studies, unquote, by various applicants, by the applicants for various reasons, such as the place I just described. Such a, uh, in all of these cases, the applicant paid for all the costs of the study, which would be d done by professional engineers under the direction of the town. The, the proposal for the old East Milton Theater is just such an example. However, such a traffic and parking plan as I have just described has not been conducted, no matter what someone states otherwise. I only ask why. Okay, I, Mr. Chairman, I, please, I, one, more, one more page. Regarding the planning board meeting on January 22nd and the subject of a new restaurant, I desire to express my regret to my colleagues on the planning board and our staff, as well as proponents and their staff regarding the restaurant and to the audience attending that meeting as well as the cable television audience. I was out of order by use of a vulgarity and I apologize. And now, Mr. Chairman, I resign from the planning board. I wish everyone well and I ask God to bless our beautiful town. Good night. go through if you are going to resign a public office and uh, um, I hope that Ed thinks about it carefully before uh, pursuing that procedure. Uh, in any event, uh, this is, uh, uh, I, I, I can say nothing beyond, beyond that. Um, so let's discuss the date of our next meeting. <clears throat> which is uh, February 26th. Right? Everyone on board with February 26th? Uh, Mr. Chair, I will not be able to attend on February 26th. Okay, so we have to reschedule February 26th because the fair special permit needs four votes and if Ed follows through with his resignation, all four of us have to be present uh, during the hearing. I'm gone the entire, uh, I'm free on the 23rd and that's it. I'm away after that. What is the 23rd? It's a Monday evening. Uh, Ned? Oh, wait, hang on. No, I'm wrong. I have, I have a conflict. You have on the 23rd? Yeah, I've got to work. What about the uh, following week? I'll be back on the 4th and can accommodate any, I'll, I'll work around whatever. March 4th? <coughs> 4th, 5th, 6th, whichever, I, well, not 6th, probably. March 4th is a Wednesday? Yes. Yes, I'm free on the fourth. 
There's a what meeting? Okay. So Yeah, well, that's fine. But we can we can move can that, move that. Uh, if necessary. Uh, okay, the fourth. I'm fine, fourth or fifth, whichever. Either either the fourth or fifth is fine. The fourth. Okay. All right. The, uh, uh, um, I did a set of minutes, but I don't see them here. Do we have them here? What about the do we want to do the other minutes? Well, you, you have a conflict on the 12th. Oh, okay. The, the 12th. Uh, what about the 12th? I have a conflict on the 12th. Do you, any other night that week? Or I cannot do week? that week. Okay. No, I'm booked you up. can't do that week? No, I'm booked up that week. So we would probably go the 18th? 18th or 19th, I'm free. The 19th is the Thursday. We have, prefer a, the we 19th. have a no. <laughs> 19th is a no. This is, a, this is where one of those little... We need to coordinate with we our... Need we need to coordinate our vacation schedules better yes, by exactly. the sounds of things. And work schedules. And work schedules. Little, yeah. This is a... All right, when can we do week. it? We're going to meet on the 4th. We could meet again that week, I suppose. Fourth and 5th. Only in the 6th. I've got a conflict, oh, you have a on, conflict the fifth. on the yeah. fifth. You said that. I just just got that yesterday. So, well, it would be fair. I think would be the major thing on the fourth. Uh, uh, so, we could go. We could just do go need late. To, do you need to do twenty sixth? We were going to do the mm -hmm. zoning bylaws on the twenty sixth. Mm -hmm. I think. Ellen. Have, we, have this already? Has the twenty sixth already been? Um, publicized? Okay, so okay. then we're good. So we, okay. Yeah. We were supposed to but do we need the, to do it on the 4th then. You're going to have the public hearing for, your, for the article on the 4th? Yes. On the 4th. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to move the townhouse committee That's out. That was on the 5th. And that means... Uh, the townhouse is, is on for the 5th though. Yeah. yeah, there's no conflict. Okay. You see, we've, we've already moved it. Okay. To, to free up the 4th. Which I'm now busy on again. <laughs> we moved it for me, but oh well. works. So the twelfth is going to be what now? We haven't decided. Okay. What about the week of the twenty-third? You don't like the twelfth? We're all the week of the twelfth is booked. Okay, March fourth. It, it seems to me we probably, you know, we probably can if we start early and go. Well, we've got the uh, the zoning article, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we would do that at 645. And the then we'd probably be up for there at 730. Mm -hmm. Just scratch the 12th? Well, the 12th is going to have to be scratched. It sounds that way. Why, but not, re not replace it? Well, you could replace it with the week of the 23rd. We already because your, your book, We've got the March 26th. Got the 26th. Is that a bad already. date for someone? 26th is fine. 26th, 26th is, is fine. Your normal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm fine okay, so that. all we're doing it's is replacing March 12th with March 4th. And scrapping the 26th of February. Scrapping. We're scrapping Amy. We're scrapping the 26th of February for March 4th. Oh. And doing away with the 12th of March. Okay, so we've actually saved a meeting. Yes, yes. we eliminated a meeting. Well, that is efficiency, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> We need a meeting? All right. Uh, when can we meet after the 4th? What's the first time? <laughs> Sounds like it's the... The first time I could meet after the 4th would be the 6th. It's a Friday. Is, is we it, have, we have it, that on a Friday before. Is a two-day gap a... Uh, I, I mean, we could always scratch the 6th if... Uh, That's a Friday. What's wrong with the 12th? The 12th is not available. I'm not available on the 12th, but that doesn't mean we the other members everyone. can't meet it. We need everyone. I, I, I that. Yeah. And, and then Mike's gone on the following week. Oh, Mike's gone. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mike's, Mike's not available that week. I'm not available that week. What about the week of the 26th? Could we meet earlier than the yeah. 26th? Yeah. I'm in D.C. I couldn't be here till probably 8 o'clock on the 25th. I could do the 25th. I could do a later meeting on the 25th. <clears throat> That's assuming I can get here. Do the 25th, and then we could do the 26th if necessary? 
is uh, uh, Hope is I that cotton to anyone's fancy? Fourth. 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 Oh, me, sorry, fourth. 25th and 26th if needed. I think that would be fine. I mean, I'm assuming at least one more night of the public hearing for there. Because I know we've got, we've got range plans, but we haven't presented yet. So that would be March 4th. Right. And it might be wrapped up yeah. then. It might not be. It might not be. Back on the 25th, hopefully wrapping up. And, uh, With a 26th, well, wait. And if I, for some reason, don't make the 25th, we're only one day late, and I can watch it in the you afternoon can watch it in and the vote afternoon. on the 26th. Yeah. That could work. Because I think my flight lands at 745. You wouldn't be here by 8. <laughs> <laughs> You won't have your luggage by eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll just drop me. <laughs> Get a parachute. You'll be fine. You know. The All right. Path. <clears throat> I know we're in the flight path. I think that we've 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 determined when we're going to meet. Uh, now it's time for citizens speak. Anyone who wants to speak on a matter that doesn't involve East Milton theater projects or landscaping businesses uh, should feel free to address the board. All right, seeing no one, we will go on to an A&R plan. Terry. Hi, um, my name is Terry McGuire. I don't know if did I need to bring a... Uh, no, you're good. Okay. Um, um, you all have a copy of the A&R plan in front of you. We do. Uh, 118 Woodland Road. Um, oh, you rearranged your stuff. <laughs> this must be it. That's it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what are you doing? Uh, well, we, we have uh, two parcels that are together, or that are separate parcels. One the house sits on, um, and there's a, uh, a parcel attached to it, beh or behind it, that's um, right now a separate parcel. And if you look at the, it's the one at the top, um, it's an oddly configured parcel. Tennis it, court parcel. it has a tennis court, it has an outbuilding, mm -hmm. and Right now, they're just two separate parcels, and so we've thought about it. And if you know, I guess if we were going to separate it and sell it at some point, then we'd want to keep it separate. But the reality is, is that it's basically the backyard area for the house, and so our idea was to combine, just combine the two lots. And what is the? Uh... Oh, you've got it's registered and unregistered. Can I, can I throw something in here? Can you throw something in? Yes. Presently, the owner has three lots. He's going to take two of the lots, put them together. So there is no, the only thing that you're going to wind up changing is the square footage of the lot itself. Uh, what he had for frontage stays as his frontage. He just adds to it. He's so going to, he's going to, it's going to. the size of his lot. Yeah, he's going to make two lots into one lot. And, and when you do that, the, the, Resulting lot is going to be bigger. Bigger. There you go. <laughs> it's nice. <Bigger. laughs> well, that's a good plan. <laughs> I have no objections anyone, to that. Anyone? Uh, um, shall we have a motion to uh, authorize one? Mr. Clark to endorse this plan as yeah. not requiring subdivision approval? So moved. Second. And a second. And do we have any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, to Adam Street, Mr. Ned Corcoran.
<clears throat> Good evening, uh, Ned Corcoran here on behalf of Extra Space Storage, which is the owner of property at 2 Adams Street, and I think several, at least two of you, will recall that we spent um, quite a bit of time permitting a series of developments at that property. Um, this is my copy of the permit book. <laughs> There are federal, state, and local permits. We achieved the second only um, Chapter 91 variance uh, granted by DEP uh, for work in a flowed tidelands. And um, got all the way to the point of um, a building permit for construction of the new building. I, I've got a memo that I uh, emailed in, and I think you each have a copy, but permit to build this building uh, on Adams Street. <clears throat> I think we spent two full nights debating what the exterior uh, of the material would be for the center structure. Um, two well-spent nights. Yes. yes. John Zickowitz came up with the notion of granite in stone infill. Um, so, the first permit, which permitted the um, development of the two old mill buildings into condominium, seven condominium units, was granted in uh, late 2007, December 2007. Um, we went back and, re and permitted the new building butting up against Adams Street uh, in 2008. Um, excuse me, May of 2007, the first permit was granted. Okay. December of 2007, this permit was granted. After it was granted, we discovered because of conditions associated with groundwater and the soil, um, we had to raise the profile mm -hmm. by four feet, and we then needed a variance. We got a variance from the Board of Appeals in April and back to the Planning Board for an amendment to the special permit, which was dated May 24, 2008. As part of the, the work in preparation for this, including the fact that we paid for and we issued uh, a building permit, we paid tens of thousands of dollars for a building permit that was issued, um, installed a water line connecting to the town's water main on Adams Street to service the, the new building, did all of the other site work required under the special permit, built the, park, the pocket park down towards the back, built the connection to the MBTA uh, station, built, uh, redid the, the, foot, uh, the footpath, the footbridge over the, the, the river, did all of those other things. The only thing that didn't get done in accordance with the permit was the construction of the new building. And in 2009, after the building permit had been issued, um, the economy hit the skids. The seven condominium units that were permitted in the, uh, in the mill buildings have never been sold as condominiums. They were unable to be financed for purchase because lenders wouldn't lend to the first owner in. Uh, and so they are, they are rented, <coughs> uh, fully occupied, uh, but they are rented. Um, and so one of the conditions in the special permit as amended provided that construction needed to begin within one year of the issuance and complete within three years of the issuance. So the expiration date of the permit therefore would be May 24, 2011, but for the economy and but for the uh, Permit Extension Act that was approved uh, initially in 2010 by the legislature and then again uh, in, uh, amended in, to, in 2012. And that extension provides that, in part, that the, all permits in place, state municipal permits, would be fully extended for four years um, from the date that they would otherwise have expired. And guidance that was issued by the Department of Housing and Economic Development confirms that a four-year extension with funds from the date that the permit would expire. And they gave an example in that, very similar to this, um, that if a permit was set to expire in September of 2011, then it would be extended until September of 2015. In this case, the permit would, is valid until uh, May 24, 2015. Um, we are currently working with the 
uh, building commissioner on a review of the plans of the building. The, the building permit uh, is good until two weeks from today. It was extended in August. Uh, and a condition was that we needed to affirm um, the, the validity of the underlying permits. Um, it was clear case law uh, that a variance that has been granted if you have recorded it and have secured a building permit and done all things to, to and, and act in accordance with the variance, then the variance stays alive as long as the building permit stays alive. A couple of recent cases on that. Um, the, there are no, there is uh, not as much case law dealing with special permits, but as I read the, the uh, provisions of the, the Permit Extension Act, it's pretty, pretty clear that this permit is valid until May 24th. I think the board has the ability without a public hearing to extend that permit uh, again for a period of six months uh, under, the, under the state law. Um, beyond that, uh, we may have to reapply for a public hearing to affirm. Um, but I think May 24th, um, it's our expectation that after meeting with the, um, working with the building commissioner, we're meeting with him tomorrow with a team of uh, um, architects, and code specialists, um, to work out some details about the differences between the building as designed under the sixth edition of the building code and the eighth edition of the building code, which is currently in effect, um, that we think that we'll be able to get to yes on the schedule and the scope uh, of things. But I think for the purposes of the planning board, uh, I need to I need to address you uh, and. Um, at least in my opinion, I think you have the authority to, to we're good till May, and we'll be back as appropriate, put it that way. But I wanted to brief you uh, on uh, the status of things. Extra Space uh, has agreed to sell the development rights, um, currently negotiating with Jack Dolly and Northland Residential to purchase those rights. They've made a substantial offer to purchase those rights. And they have agreed to work together while they negotiate um, price and purchase and sale to keep permits alive uh, and moving forward. So uh, the, the hope is that um, by the time the snow has melted, we're ready to go. Um, with a new, uh, one thing that we'll be doing, uh, we'll be discussing with Joe Prondack when we meet tomorrow, is we'll be doing a side-by-side -side analysis of the, the differences between the, the, the billing as designed and what would be necessary if, design under the 20 under the eighth edition of building code one thing we do understand is the eighth edition of the building code allows wood frame um, high-rise wood frame um, so it is possible that we could uh, go this is a brick and steel and concrete building um, that we could come up to the level of the over the restaurant on the first floor with, uh, with brick, concrete and steel frame and go wood frame above that um, that would require at least some interior reworking of the, of the building. We don't know whether it would require a change in the, in the exterior facade. If yes, we'd have to come back to amend the special permit to allow the change in the appearance of the building because the, the permit is pretty <coughs> clear and it applies to, the, to the, this design um, and the floor plans, etc. Uh, but if it's possible and it is more cost effective, to go wood frame, then we will we will we will take that. Um, and so that's a sort of a long-winded way around to saying that um, the good news is that this thing is moving. Um, we think that it's going to happen. I've been cajoling um, both of my clients to get keep this thing alive. Um, the economy really put the put the pressure on this thing, but you know, um, in terms of the build out of the two. Uh, the two mill buildings, the site work, the permitting costs, the design work, more than a million dollars, well more than a million dollars has been spent on this thing and it ought to have the ability to be complete. So. Not to mention significant public time in the uh, original review. This was a very long and complex process. Um, I remember it well because it was one of the first big processes I went through when I came on the board. So. Um, it went through a, a very complex public input process. I could teach a full law school class. Now, what, <laughs> as, as I understand it, I mean, this permit requires completion of the building by May 15th, and 
clearly a building is <coughs> going to be completed. Right. So you'd like to amend the special permit to push out that date to a date that the building can be completed within. So, um, and you've got time, we could even, we can advertise it, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, then, you, you know, hopefully if you're going to do other stuff, you want other stuff done that's going to require amendment of the special permit. We could do it all at once if you knew what it was. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know what it is yet. Um, right. Now, I'm, I'm simply saying we're going to have to, before May 15th, have a hearing on whether or not to extend this for probably two years from May 15th. That's, that sounds uh, uh, easy enough to do. I think so. I just thought it was important to meet because given the deadline with the, the existing building permit, I wanted to... to right. Well, you had to explain about why... <laughs> why this didn't <laughs> expire years ago. So that took a little time. Okay, uh, so you will be back. We'll be back. With that. And hopefully okay. with a... Now, um, we're going to go to the Fair Nursery application. And we have Mr. Prondack here at our request. Uh, and why don't... Uh, I think Mr. Prontag should probably, uh, I don't, unless the board thinks that we should have him cool his heels just to uh, uh, see how we can operate, uh, I think we should, we should uh, consult him about what we wanted him here for. Good evening. Joe Prondack, Building Commissioner. I guess we wanted to hear from you what the general legal thicket looks like. Um, I, I, can, I, can, I can do that. Okay. Um, so we're going to now commence the hearing on an application by, is it by Fair Nursery? Fair Nursery. Fair Nursery. Uh, for a special permit uh, to conduct a landscaping business, it's been duly advertised, um, and uh, the hearing is now underway. And so, why don't you tell us what you can? Yes. I yes. Think technically, the hearing commenced January eighth, and it was recon and it was continued to continue to tonight. All right, so not only, uh, uh, we will simply say this is a continuation of a hearing on the application of Fair Nursery. Uh, but with that slight change, you, you can proceed. Okay, so I, I, I would start by saying that, uh, of course, it's not my intention to sway the board one way or another in the decision on this special permit. And I, and I think that's just good to say for the record. Um, I do have a presentation uh, that I've somewhat prepared a, a, a more of a verbal presentation um, in three parts. One is to talk about the existing, the challenges of uh, existing administration enforcement of, of special permits and uses such as this, um, including Thayer Nursery, which is the target of, of this, this hearing. Um, and then to talk about um, some things in the uh, uh, bylaw that um, I see as a concern, uh, and, and some of that review I've done with town council, um, uh, in particular Lauren Galvin, uh, who, who's, who brought up some additional points that, that, that I didn't see. Um, and then uh, finally, I, w I would like to um, probably recommend some conditions uh, should a permit issue. Uh, and, and of course, uh, unless you want me to uh, not do all that. Uh, I think the board would like you to do that. Is that <coughs> the sense of the board? Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, proceed. Okay. So um, uh, there's been a lot of um, uh, back and forth over um, alleged violations, violations, um, enforcement. Um, so, so just a quick um, uh, rundown of, of, of that process. Um, if someone alleges a violation, uh, to my office. Uh, we have to do an investigation. We have to confirm the violation. If we do that, we then have to send out an enforcement no notice. Uh, 
or in the alternative, if we find no violation, uh, we would send out, in most cases, uh, uh, a letter saying that we find no violation to the complainant. Every letter that I send out is appealable to the permit granting authority. And in past history, is, that has been the Zoning Board of Appeals. In the case of Thayer Nursery, over the past two or three years, almost every letter that I have sent out has been appealed by either a complainant or, or the um, holder of the permits. Um, so the Board of Appeals then has to conduct a hearing and determine whether or not there was in fact a violation or if there was no violation, whether they uphold my decision or whether they overturn my decision. Once they complete that process, that is then appealable to Superior Court. Um, and I think it's fair to say that almost every decision of the Board of Appeals over the past couple years on this property has been appealed to Superior Court. Currently, there are five cases pending in Superior Court. Uh, three filed by abutters and, I'm sorry, two filed by abutters and three filed by um, the holders of the permits. Um, it's, it's pretty clear to me, so, and, and I think as I go on, you'll, you'll, you'll see even more some of the, some of the reasons this becomes so, in some cases, convoluted and challenging. Um, Um, so to add to that a little bit into, well, I'll sort of segue a little bit into the bylaw. Um, chapter 48, Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 8 says that any, any appeal goes back to the permit granting authority initially. So in this case, if a permit is issued, the planning board is the permit granting authority, not the zoning board of appeals. However, in paragraph one of the bylaw, it says that upon application by the building commission during the term or extended term of the special permit, the special permit may, may be revoked by the Board of Appeals. So I have to wonder, and this was brought up by town council, was that intended to go back to the Board of Appeals or was it intended, should that, should that really say planning board? Um, because if it is intended to be the Board of Appeals, I think that presents another set of challenges in that the Board of Appeals then has to review the special permit that the Planning Board issued and decide whether there is a violation as opposed to the actual permit granting authority. But that would only be in the, in the case of me bringing an action. If I issue an enforcement order or fail to issue an enforcement order, the appeal by either the permit holder or the or an abutter still comes back to this Board. So that one piece of language there again, presents a bit of a challenge. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on um, that has particularly um, um, presented challenges to the town over the years, not only with me and current Board of Appeals, but with my predecessor and prior Boards of Appeals, is the farm exemption uh, that the nursery enjoys. Um, some of the things that are regulated by the special permit cross the line of things that are allowed as a matter of right uh, by the farm exemption. And the line is not, is not clear cut. Um, and I think it's even challenging for the courts to, to, to sort that out in some cases. Um, so I'll, I'll get into that a little further, um, uh, a little bit further down the road. Um, so I, and so then I wanted to go into, um, uh, and I kind of, it'll, it'll somewhat go in order. Um, some of the things I see in the, um, in the special permit itself. And the first one comes in uh, the second paragraph. Uh, under purpose, um, where it just 
uh, simply talks about reasonable limits. It's the last sentence of the second paragraph, reasonable limits on amount of infrastructure, equipment, and operations. And what I will say probably over and over again is that is it's important here to be specific because challenges for the board and for me, for the abutters, for the nursery um, have been non-specifics. For example, an amount of mulch or an amount of firewood. Um, to say something like um, an entity would be allowed to keep an amount of mulch consistent with its business use or its expected business practice is, is not enough because, uh, and this is, this is a, a, a happened similarly up at um, Eagle Farm as well, uh, the amount of mulch we really need to, in my opinion, specify yardage uh, and how much can be kept at any one time and what the turnover rate is. You know, for example, if you say, if a board were to say, okay, you can have 100 yards of mulch or, or other bulk product, well, if they turn over 100 yards of mulch in, in a month or two, that's probably not a big deal. But if they turn over 100 yards of mulch in three days, that means a lot of truck traffic and a lot more disturbance to the neighborhood. So there's there are those kinds of challenges as well. Um, further down uh, in section two, um, where it talks about definition of landscape business and it, and it says install, install and maintains lawns, trees, yards, shrubs, gardens, patios, related grounds, and other outdoor areas which are owned by others. Uh, and speaking to Thayer Nursery in particular, for example, some of the things they have done uh, in the past, uh, one of their business uh, things was to construct um, stairs, uh, uh, front stairs and back stairs to houses. Um, I don't consider that landscaping. They happen to build it out of uh, granite stone, granite, uh, prefabricated granite stone, which can also be used as a landscaping <coughs> product. But just because it's used as a landscaping product, it shouldn't necessarily be allowed to, to, to be used as a construction uh, material as well. Um, so that means the landscaping business is uh, morphing from, from landscape to, to actual construction. Um, there's also a fine line on retaining walls. Um, re retaining walls that are truly used for landscaping purposes sh clearly should be allowed. Um, but to go to another extreme, maybe an absurd extreme, but retaining walls that are built along the Southeast Expressway to retain a road up above, um, there's, they're both retaining walls but there needs to be a line drawn as to, to um, uh, where, where, what can be permitted. Um, uh, stone, in, in further down in the definition, uh, it talks about um, the business authorized to sell tree, shrub, sod, seed, loam, mulch, and related material, and may be authorized to sell stone, stone dust, gravel, pavers, landscape, ornamentation, timbers. Um, so again, I think tree, shrub, sod, seed, loam, that's all pretty clear. Nursery stock, we've, we've looked at that over and over again, and, and, and there's, there's no fine line there, uh, pretty obvious. but. Uh, when we get into mulch and stone and stone dust, again, there should be a specific, we, 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 it would be helpful to be specific. And then when we get into pavers and things of that nature, there are many different kinds of pavers. There are many different kinds of products for uh, masonry retaining walls. There is, all, there is a fine line between masonry, masonry supply and landscape supply. Um, so are we selling, there somehow needs to be quantification of, 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 of the pavers and masonry products. Um, and and, and I, I say this as if it's easy, but 
you say be specific on the actual material itself, the type of pain is? Are you going to say, say quantity or are you saying both? I, I, I think it's more quantity because the other challenge too is that is that product, a lot of the products that we have today weren't available 10 years ago and products change and, and so uh, not so much product specific but I think somehow amounts um, Product specific could get outdated quite quickly, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next one um, that presents an enormous challenge to myself, the board, and everyone involved in in the paragraph after definition before number three. Authorization of an activity shall be at, at the level no greater than the level of the activity existing in 2012. One of the prior special permits said very specifically uh, in 19, that, that the level of the business at the Air Nursery shall be no greater than the level that occurred in 1967. Nobody is able to say for sure um, exactly what that level was. It's very hard to define. Um, so, all of us sitting at the table, may, we may know um, uh, what that level is right now. But five years from now, um, after I hit the lottery and moved to Hawaii and everybody else is um, elsewhere, um, the, the people that, that take our places aren't necessarily going to know what was the level in 2012 unless it's, unless it's spelled out. Um, and then, as we move on to, to uh, number four, part D, um, the drainage plan. Um, there have been complaints about, about the drainage, um, existing conditions. Um, very hard for any agency to verify the complaint. Because of X, X, and X, drainage my basement filled with water may be true may very well be true but it could just be that because of the excessive rainstorm on May 13th my basement filled with water there's no way for the town to prove that so my su my suggestion on drainage is that all we can simply do on that the drainage whether it's stay a nursery or any development we have a a, 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 a professional engineer designed the drainage and a professional, professional engineer to certify that the drainage was installed as designed. So that that same designer knows all the ins and outs of, of what's needed to achieve that person's plan, that that same person go and certify um, what they proposed. And with the understanding that when, a, when, a, when an engineer designs a drainage plan, they take into account existing conditions and they use a projected um, stormwater standard. What is the average rainfall of the average big storm every 25 years or something like that? So if if sometime during the course of the future we, we get a rainstorm that exceeds that, there's likely going to be a problem with the drainage. A drainage plan, even certified by an engineer, isn't necessarily going to be a catch-all. There will be, there will and can be some problems down the road. It, it, it just, and, and maybe I say that somewhat for the public too, that, that um, we, we, can, we don't have the wherewithal to perfect that process. Nobody does. Um, uh, in section <coughs> I think pardon me for one second Um, in section 4H, uh, building plans, I, I think it, I just think it's important to show that, um, or to somehow ensure that any future building uh, on the site, I think probably should 
come back for an amendment to the special permit. Or the special permit should say that certain buildings can be allowed by the building commissioner. Uh, you know, if they wanted to put in an 8 by 10 garden shed, do we just hold that to the typical um, accessory building standard that currently exists in the, in the, in the general bylaw? Or does a change like that <coughs> require a new, uh, an amendment to the special permit? I think that should, should be clear. Um, and then uh, there's some discussion in, the mitig in, in 4J, the mitigation plan. Actually, I didn't, I didn't properly mark that, but let me just say this about sound buffering, uh, and there's some talk about putting sound buffering on fences. Um, it's a good idea, and it absolutely should be done, but like drainage, it is, not a, it is not a perfect science. We can put sound buffering on fences to help reduce and muffle and mitigate some of the noise, but some of what a landscape slash nursery does is noisy and offensive. Um, there are times when they have to use chainsaws. You can put all the sound acoustical panels on the fences you want. It's not going to stop the noise of the chainsaws. Um, so, and even to, to uh, I've seen in other towns where they've conditioned the special permit and, and relied on uh, the DEP has a general noise pollution um, standard that says noise shall not be more than 10 decibels over ambient. But what they refuse to get into is that ambient varies greatly. And the ambient varies with humidity, am ambient varies night and day, and the ambient varies with temperature. So if, if a standard like that were to be placed on a particular place, um, you would have to do an ambient sound study. Um, so, again, I guess I just say that, um, that even though, you know, if a permit is granted, um, I'm sure the board will likely require some sound mitigation. It will not be, no matter what we do, it won't be a, an exact science. Um, uh, firewood. Um, uh, again, I think it should be quantified. Um, and the bylaw does speak to the quiet loading of trucks. That, and there's another section which I have further down uh, about dumpsters. Uh, it also, the bylaw also talks about the quiet loading of dumpsters. So steel dump trucks and steel dump dumpsters are giant echo chambers. And when they're empty and you dump a load of firewood into them, they're going to make noise, unless you were to line the bottom of them with hay or something like that. So again, there has to, I think there has to be an understanding that, yeah, maybe you load the dumpster or load the truck over here behind the building, behind the fence, so it something blocks the noise. But some of this perfection can't be achieved. Um, and uh, but again, uh, just to reiterate on the firewood, uh, quantity should be spelled out. How many cords of wood can be kept, and and the turnover mm -hmm. rate, I, th I think, is important because the turnover rate really ties back to the amount of truck traffic and, and loading traffic and noise and all of that. Um, In section in section seven C operators of landscaping business an operator or an authorized representative shall be on site during regular business hours and if any complaints are received on account of non compliance with any such requirement terms and conditions shall promptly cause such non compliance to be cured. Um, uh, again, from, from my perspective as, as the enforcement agent, the administrator, the town zoning administrator, um, this is, uh, 
oftentimes when I get a complaint of noncompliance, there's the other side that, that says, no, 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 we're not noncompliant. So um, it triggers an investigation, uh, an enforcement order, and then uh, often likely a subsequent appeal. Um, in Section D, the backup horns um, shall be modulated to the, to, to the minimum level deemed, deemed permissible by applicable law. Um, we, we probably should find out what that applicable law is because that can change over time. Whoever, uh, the, whoever writes that law and says, okay, the backup beeper shall be so many megahertz or however they measure sound, um, that could change down the road and there needs to be um, some way to verify or quantify that. Um, when you say that, do you, are you looking for us to fix a level or are you looking for us to be specific on what law we're talking about? I, so think, I think specific on what law. So that you know where, if it changes, which law to read. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Understood. Or if it's challenged, we know which, okay. which regulation we're going by or having to Came hold from. Understood. the, the uh, special permit holder to. Okay. Um, Uh, in Section E, uh, on-site traffic loading deliveries, um, there shall be no, in further down, almost toward the end of that paragraph, there shall be no lo loading or use of noisy equipment on Sundays, provided that use of equipment for loading of plant and nursery materials, which are not sold as part of the landscaping services, shall be permissible between certain hours. The mulch and stone and s stone dust. Again, there's a fine line. Where is where is this uh, nursery material? Where is it landscaping material? So uh, some of this stuff I don't have an answer or, or, or a good recommendation as to how to address it. But I, I I'm just bringing it up as uh, you know I see a, a potential problem if we're saying that. Um, you know they can they can use equipment to load trees as part you know trees and shrubs and plants you know somebody comes in and buys 10 12 foot arborvitaes on a sunday sure you need equipment to load that um, but then can they also get uh 30 yards of mulch which is a couple of dump trucks to go on and plant those and, and how do you how do we get at a reasonable way to accommodate that or not um, uh, the bylaw does also uh, speak uh, I'll take truck traffic God I had this all at some point in the bylaw it does it does speak about a, a, a truck traffic issue there needs to be a log for public inspection um, public inspection is not just in for public inspection is the public um, so maybe that that should just be made clear to the um, permit holder should a permit issue um, <coughs> And then uh, that, uh, so my third part would be some, some suggested uh, uh, conditions or su suggested things to consider uh, as part of the conditions. Um, one is uh, hours of operation of the nursery as a whole, which is somewhat defined in there. Um, delivery times also somewhat defined in there, but, but should be specific in the permit. Um, hours of operation of machinery you know, bobcats, blowers, lawnmowers, backhoes, front end loaders. Um, I've spoken to specifying quantities of products, yards of bulk stuff like mulch and loam and sand, um, cords of wood and amounts of masonry products. 
I believe that it should be made clear up front that there should be no sales of sales or service of tractors, mowers, blowers, machinery, etc. At some point over the winter um, at the nursery, a, uh, a, um, a small retail store I, I, I considered a gift shop popped up. Um, uh, and uh, they were selling arts and picture frames and handbags and woven table linens and things of that nature. Um, and you know, some people could say, well, it was fairly benign and they, they, it, was, it was done to accommodate some struggling artists. Um, but some people could also say that, look, this is a, simply a retail store that's not permitted anywhere in the bylaw. Uh, as building commissioner, um, I'd just like to say that, that, that the dis disappointing part about that for me as building commissioner was that, that, that it just came about and there was no, no the nursery never came to us and said, hey, can we do this? They just did it. So I, I think it's important to point that out. Um, um, with respect to the number of trucks, trailers, bobcats, loaders, um, it should, conditions on those, especially with the trucks, bobcats, loaders, and, 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 and backhoes, uh, because that equipment always has to be replaced periodically. Um, so the size and series of those vehicles should remain the same, and that should, probably should be specified. Because if, if, you, if we just say five trucks, uh, well, they do have five dump trucks, um, and they all are, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what we call six-wheel dump trucks, um, if they were to replace, replace all of those with 10-wheel dump trucks, if it's not specified, um, I think it's safe, reasonable to assume that uh, that's a, a, a noisier and more offensive um, operation. So, um, um, the, f the farm exemption, um, and, and, I, and specifically, again, talking about the nursery, uh, I believe, uh, as building commissioner, that, and I believe that the board has the right to do this, I believe that if a special permit is granted, then the nursery should in some way forfeit their right to the farm exemption. Because what can happen, for example, If they're allowed to maintain the, the farm exemption, they could at any point in time say, okay, we're gonna bring in 40 head of cattle. Not that they would, but, or they could, you know, maybe, maybe pellet stoves or some sort of technology would become available and it would be a worthwhile venture for them to build a couple of silos and store some corn, um, you know? And under the farm exemption, we couldn't deny them a permit for that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm using examples that are somewhat of a stretch, but um, again, this, this has been a challenge for, for us and the Board of Appeals over the years. Um, you know, I think that they could very easily say, okay, here are the things we do under the farm exemption now, and we want to continue to do those, and it can be made part of the special permit. Um, so again, that's the Board's decision, but it's just a suggestion something down that avenue so that we we don't spend all this time putting all these conditions on the landscape and nursery business only to have it defeated by the farm exemption, which I think can, can possibly happen. Uh, and then some of the other issues that have come up. <coughs> uh, uh, music during festivals. Uh, we, I think we all know that the nursery has festivals. Um, and, and maybe a limit should be put on the times that music can play. Um, I, I, I think that we somehow should specifically say that, they're, they're, that they cannot be a construction business. Landscape, landscaping business, yes, and all that goes along with that, but 
when it comes to putting additions, whether it's sunroom, green rooms, stairs, anything attached to the house or the building on the property, they should be prevented from, they, they've gone from a landscape business to a, then a construction business, which again, there can be that, that fine line. Um, there should be um, uh, something that uh, ensures facilities for employees, specifically bathrooms and things of that nature on the property. Um, that came up relative to another um, landscape operation, not necessarily fair, but I think it's good to have in there. Um, I also think that they should not be allowed to sh uh, sell um, uh, sheds and cabanas and things of that nature. That should be restricted. Um, and then the final thing, both from myself and uh, town council, um, is that there should be a condition uh, in the special permit that specifically authorizes the town of Milton, myself, the, or any building commissioner uh, to inspect the premises at any reasonable time uh, during the operation of, say, a nursery, um, without the need to make an appointment. Um, this, this issue was brought up by Thayer Nursery um, for the town. And although we discounted it as not valid, we believe we have the right to do that. Um, the question came up as to whether or not a judge would agree with that. So we think that it's appropriate and helpful to have that specific condition in a special permit should one issue. And that's all I got. <coughs> I thought one of the things you uh, brought up were great points. Yeah, uh, I'm a bit lazy. I'm going to try to give you some notes. But can you summarize those for us? Again? Yeah, so my plan is to, after, I didn't want to put it all in writing right now because if things, you know, some, maybe <coughs> some things would have gotten resolved or other things would have come up during this discussion. Um, so after tonight, I'll, I'll put this all, reduce this to writing and, and get a two to four. Do you think, when you talk about the, the truck law, do you think that was too much of a burden and they had to ask that it to be available to the public? Do you think it should just be available to the, to the building inspector? Um, to the town authority? Possibly, but it's in the bylaw now. Uh, I mean, oh. it, it, it's, it's, it's just there. I think the uh, emphasis on measurable quantities is very helpful for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it just sets that standard by which you said you're either over or under. You know, there's no question. So but that was very helpful to, to emphasize that. What sort of uh, sound attenuation material is best put on a fence, do you know? Um, no, I, I have been looking into that a little bit. Um, Let us know. I, I, yeah, uh, there's another entity in town that's that's met, might be a little further along in that research, um, so we may be able to um, have some information along shortly on that. Most horrifying thing that you said tonight had to do with uh, 40A8, mm -hmm. an appeal to the permit granting authority, may be taken <coughs> by any person aggrieved. It does say an appeal to the permit granting authority as the zoning ordinance or bylaw may provide. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the question is, I, I mean, if we are entering into a endless series of litigations, um, that's something that we have to be advised of. But it does seem to me that since the the zoning bylaw doesn't actually provide for an appeal to the planning board. But, well, uh, I, actually, it does. It does. I think it's section uh, Roman numeral eight. Um, in in any event, we're going to have to. It's got to be really tight because uh, if we're going to be litigating appeals on uh, the th their nursery, uh, we're going to need a. If we issue a permit, it's got to be a really tight permit. I think laying out the appeal process within the permit would make a lot of sense as well. And, and, and that's, you know, I brought that up because that's the situation we are in. And that's the that's how 40A is laid uh, out. How many, how many cases do you have? Uh, five um, pending in Superior Court, unresolved. 
and, and I think what's happening, probably other judges are just waiting to see what happens during this process. That's my own personal opinion. Other attorneys may have other opinions. Is there anything floating around the ZBA? Uh, no, no, no. Z ZBA is um, up to date, quiet. quiet at the moment. But <laughs> it, it, seemingly that's what it's been over the past two to three years is, is just, um, you know, a, a, an enforcement order, a lack thereof, an appeal to the ZBA, a decision by the ZBA, and an appeal to court. And it, it, it that's the way the law is. That's the way the law is laid out. That's the way it's supposed to work. Uh, and and both sides have been taking advantage of that, which is available to them. Well, uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks Thank for you. your uh, uh, your thoughts. Uh, uh, does the uh, anyone in the Board, have any other questions? Anyone in the audience have questions for the building inspector? Yes, sir. I, I don't understand. But you have to come up and state your name and speak okay. into the uh, microphone. But don't say you don't understand. You Ask him a there. question. So. I'm Phil Johanning, 23 Parkwood Drive. Um, my question is why does Mr. Prondek keep talking about the um, Dover Amendment, this uh, farm use thing? Because uh, I've been to Superior Court on a number of occasions, and I've been before the Board of Appeals on a number of occasions, and they say that since the primary use of the they problem, say they say the the they judge said they say. the judge the judge said that because the primary use of the property is not agricultural, it is not protected by the the Dover. Well, well, we'll figure this out. Uh, I'm I'm just stating. Well, that okay, that's what the if, Superior if, Court. Do you understand said. the question? I do. Okay, well, if so why do you say that uh, it exists when judges say uh, judges say that it, it doesn't exist? The last court proceeding that I was at, which was I where? At mm. But, but, but Mr. Joe Henning, well, this is not, you can't the examine the building. I thought I had a, the judge I said, the judge said at the beginning of the presentations by all three attorneys, mm -hmm. town council, for uh, uh, Lauren Galvin, uh, Frank DeLuna for say, a nursery, and Matthew Dunn. He said to all three attorneys before he started the proceeding, we all agree that there's some sort of protection under the Dover Amendment here, and they all agreed that it is. There was no, dis no detailed discussion of it. Um, okay. It happened, and town council agrees that. Okay. Uh, we'll, figure, we'll figure out the Dover Amendment. That's a legal issue, not for the building inspector. you have a question for the building inspector? Well, I, I, just, I, I made a point of clarification that was there. Well, you can, you can talk about, you can, when it comes time for comment, you can talk about all you like about all the court proceedings. Not in public comment. I just, I just, I just what is your question to the building inspector? I don't have any questions. Okay, well, you, you know, there's going to be plenty of time for you to, to, to be heard on any issue you want to be heard on, as long as it's relevant to the, uh, to the hearing. Um, anyone else with a question for the building inspector? I want to be clear that this is a relevant issue. I brought it up, and you're uh, getting in my way, and I think that's not, not right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, any other questions for the building inspector? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Prontag, for coming in. Okay, thanks very much, folks. Now, thanks. Mr. Uh, Parker, you, we're going to hear from you. We're going to go, because we started 15 minutes late, we're going to go until 8.15, and then we are going to do the Falcone matter. Uh, Okay, um, I have a brief PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> so, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here and present on behalf of Thayer Nursery, um, Ned Corcoran, attorney on behalf of Thayer. We, um, and I apologize for 
the late delivery on Tuesday of... Uh, I have a question. Do anybody know where the uh, remote is for... It's even ground. I think it's on the ground. Uh, no, I can do it with this. Oh, that's, I can do it with this. Oh, no, that's for that. Uh, um, we can, we have boards. There wasn't anything on the table. I've got, we've got boards. We can use the boards. And they equate <coughs> to a set of plans that were um, included in the packet that we delivered on Tuesday. Uh, evening the 10th. Um, I apologize for the, for the late delivery. Um, the current weather conditions contributed to some degree uh, in the ability to produce that information. Um, I think perhaps a couple of a couple of things. Um, We have proposed, and I think for the purpose of this, it would be helpful to, to suggest what we propose as modifications to the proposed conditions plan. Um, and then we can get into specifics uh, about how to mitigate what to do with the conditions that we, we've suggested would be. I think we, we I tried to do uh, a much better job at sort of identifying in accordance with the bylaw how we would mitigate, how we would adjust, how we, what we would do. So um, late last week, uh, or over the weekend, Josh Oldfield met with Pam Lapore, who lives next door. And I don't, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, Pam, but that meeting was intended to at least uh, commence a better set of communications about what and how uh, this area uh, it's called the land care yard, would look like how it would operate and how it could be best mitigated with respect to the impacts on uh, Ms. Lepore. There's no question that by proposing the relocation of the landscaping conditions in this area of the property, that we are moving them away from uh, the area where they have historically been conducted and moving right here to the area that's proximate to Lepore's property. Um, I would note that she, that her house is somewhat distant, but I know that she has plans to build new and perhaps closer to the area in question. So understanding that uh, she still doesn't desire to see this, Josh and she talked about a number of uh, conditions, I think some of which she was okay with, some of which she was not okay with. Uh, and as I understand them, uh, basically as follows. One, the, the prior plan showed a clockwise uh, forward only movement for trucks. I think that had significant concern in part because all of the trucks would be coming essentially within 15 or 20 feet of the property line. It was designed, intended to do that so that we would minimize the backing of trucks, particularly as they were loading or unloading. But it certainly brings closer. And that includes um, large trucks which deliver firewood and trucks that deliver um, mostly landscaping, uh, excuse me, um, nursery materials, uh, nursery product trees that are planted and transplanted come from across the country. They come on large, uh, large uh, trucks. And those trucks can be as tall as 12 to 13 uh, feet. Um, <laughs> By changing that out and having those trucks sort of enter and back to a point that's further away from property, um, <clears throat> those larger trucks will no longer be visible uh, if a fence is installed along here um, that is shorter than the height of those trucks. The proposal would then be that A, we're eliminating that forward movement. B, increasing the height of the fence that was previously proposed from eight feet with no berm to eight feet on top of a one-foot berm, so essentially nine feet. Sound attenuation in accordance with materials that I've provided uh, from the sound um, engineer. Uh, and we can discuss if you have questions. Uh, and that the height of the only trucks that would be still coming around here periodically would be the diesel fuel delivery truck, which will park 
proximate to the shed where the diesel, where the diesel sh fuel is located. It will park in here. It has a hose long enough that can come without parking here. It could come around for the sake of moving out as opposed to backing and, and exiting the site. Um, but that, those, um, as I understand it, those trucks are nine feet tall and they would be the same height of the fence. The tallest truck that Thayer operates is a dump. Uh, it's nine feet. So it would be not visible if operating on this on inside of that fence. Um, the operations, the, the setback, the closest a series of material bins that are identified along the westerly side of the barn and then along three on the westerly side of the land care yard. The closest point uh, to her property line is 49 feet. Um, and that there were, would be six concrete bins, uh, 30 feet by 13 feet. This would be for um, stone dust, uh, other materials like that. Composting and mulches would be stored on this side, on the westerly side, much closer to the Josh um, Oldfield dwelling. Um, there are currently four um, shown on the existing conditions plan. There are four sprinklers uh, located, uh, not on this plan, there are four sprinklers currently located uh, approximate to this area. They would be moved <coughs> to corners of the uh, material bins be used um, in dry and hot weather uh, and turn on at least uh, 15 minutes per day, three times a week, uh, weather permitting, weather as, uh, as required. Um, there was consideration, uh, discussion with Ms. Lepore about perhaps using this area for um, idle, for parking of equipment when not in use, but overnight, um, that was a concern. And so the proposal is to move those that to here, to the easterly side of the tool shop on the side of the wood barn. It would only be used to park vehicles when not in use overnight or during the day uh, when not in use. So Josh, I think that's, those were the areas of concern. Pam, I'm not sure if there was anything else that was discussed or considered, but um, certainly as, as I sat back with Josh and heard what I understood to be the concerns. We wanted to adjust the plan as much as possible to mitigate um, the impacts. Um, that's, this actually is probably better than yeah. showing it. Except that this has the pictures of what, what you expect <coughs> it to look like. Uh, <coughs> existing and stuff. Your choice. There are, um, let's see. so with respect to that, those are really the, the significant changes. Um, I can go a little bit more into detail on, on and I did provide in, in the materials three separate um, smaller components of this. So I guess we can walk through. Um, Again, the area that we're calling the, the land care yard um, shows more clearly uh, what I just uh, provided. Um, identifies on here, there are four sort of significant spotlights with respect to um, lighting. One on the corner of the barn, one on each side on the peak of the gable of the garden shop one on the shed, one on the, this is five, and one on the barn itself. These two face into the area where the Christmas trees are generally staged. Uh, these face into this area. They are 1,000 watt uh, spotlights. Um, 
the, the, the lighting plan that we provided shows that from a candle perspective, most of the light dissipates before it gets off the property. Um, that just means that it doesn't, pro it doesn't pro they don't provide much use beyond a certain point as you get out to the property, but they are highly visible and uh, can be seen much larger distances. So the proposal is that we will adjust the direction down there. We think we, there are some aftermarket hoods that can be purchased that would be acquired and installed and that they would be turned off uh, by 10 o'clock at night. Um, I think, as I understand it, uh, just talking to Josh and Maggie, Josh prefers to see things light up, lit up from a security perspective at night um, and whatnot. Um, probably detracts deer to some degree, uh, but it certainly, uh, that's, a, that's an easy condition uh, to live with. Um, you know, if you live in Rowan, Johanny, Tevens, or Deporey, whoever, you ought not to be able to read in the bathroom at night you know, without using the own light, their own lights. Um, with respect to the east side, there's really no change that's been proposed from what was previous. Um, we proposed a 30-day fence across um, at, um, let's see, across the easterly line, 30 feet in from the Roe Johanning property line, um, running essentially from the, there's a deer fence uh, just here. Um, coming southerly. The topography, it's interesting on the lot, and we'll get more into it next time when we really discuss the drainage, uh, but the topography of the area sweeps down from the Blue Hill. At the, let's see, I think at the corner, at the, at, got it, at, the northwest, the southwesterly corner of the property at Forest Street, the elevation is 196. When it gets off the property on the east side, the elevation is dropped to about 182. So there's a 14 foot elevation change just in the gradual direction, and it goes in that direction, and that's historic. It's been like that for a long time. Forest Street comes down the hill, everything comes down with it, and, it, and everything goes to the northeast. At, um, so there are elevations as you get out into the, to this area. Um, at elevation 184, it drops, there's a little swale, it drops, it's 182, and then further down and back to 182. And then as you go off the property, this line on the Johanning Coal is 182, it drops to 180, and it drops further in their, in, in their property. The notion is that at this point, at 184, we install a 10-foot tall fence, um, such that the top of the fence would be at elevation 194, which would be 12 feet above 182 elevation at the Rowan Johanny property line. So essentially 12 feet visible um, height barrier here. In addition, we'll be removing approximately 10,000 square feet of fairly impervious material. Um, if you recall from the aerial photos, this is a very hard packed, dense uh, area. Um, that's going to be removed and replaced with nursery stock grow out area that's similar to what exists on the northeasterly and southwest and the northwesterly quadrants of the property. Um, this, this will be changed out with a softer material as well. So there'll be less, it'll be more, it'll be less pervious, more, more pervious, and less prone to dust <coughs> and whatnot. There are four or five, five sprinklers currently in this area. Those sprinklers will remain in effect and again will be operated uh, in the same way as the sprinklers here. Uh, weather, weather requiring um, at least three times per week for 15 minutes 
um, at a time. The um, Oldfields have met with the Coles, and they've agreed on a set of uh, infill of evergreen here. They now they did not want a fence. They agreed on a on an evergreen infill. And they're proposing additional evergreen infill um, as well, both on either side of the fence, as shown. Finally, with respect to parking, with the exception of the occasional event, uh, Christmas tree sales and holiday festival, uh, there's, there's almost no need for parking. Um, I've been there now a couple of dozen times and when I'm there during the day on weekends, I'm probably, I'm often the only person there. My, my car's probably often only the only vehicle that's there that's not, doesn't belong to the property. That's not to say that on uh, weekends uh, there may be a, a reasonable stream of customers coming in to per order or purchase materials, whether it's firewood in the winter, whether it is um, landscaping uh, materials, mulches and whatnot during the, the spring and summer. Uh, but it's a pretty low volume. Uh, they don't, it's a, they, they, what they sell uh, is uh, in occasional sales. So we're proposing a total of 16 parking spaces to meet whatever that customer de demand might be. Um, 13, as you enter the site, 10 along the right-hand side, three um, in parallel to the driveway, and three more, uh, numbered 14 through 16, next to the greenhouse. 17 through 24, which are in the greenhouse and uh, in front of the, the, to the, beyond the opening to the wood barn, would be um, for uh, employees. That's more parking space than, the, than is needed for the employees because many of the employees uh, carpool um, together, they don't, they don't all arrive with their own vehicle. Most of them comes in three, twos and threes and fours. Um, so there's an adequate number of spaces there. And then 25 to 34 would be available, as I said earlier, for the um, off hour, not for the parking of vehicles and equipment when not in use. Small equipment, bobcats, um, and whatnot would be parked inside the barn. Occasionally trucks would be parked inside the barn. The interior of the barn is almost 3,300 square feet. Um, it's a large, open barn. It is made of concrete. Um, the side walls are concrete up to about eight feet. Steel members and then wood on top. So, uh, for example, when a load of firewood comes in in a large 18-wheeler, um, uh, uh, if it comes from Vermont and arrives midday, um, if, a, if a truck were to come in and back into the barn and offload it, it would, a, a full load would take up about 10% of the floor area when pushed in. So if two or three loads are present, there's a significant amount of it, open area within the wood barn uh, for parking, for storage, for operational uh, things. So uh, as I described, for example, in the, uh, the firewood operations, section, uh, all of the loading and unloading can, can, can occur inside the wood barn where it should be quiet and muffled. Um, we propose, um, and I gave a spec for three quarter inch thick rubber matting that would be installed in the beds of their, of their dumps. Um, it's, it's actually good for maintenance of the, of the dumps. Um, it's something that they will do and that will significantly muffle the first one or two loads firewood that would be loaded into uh, a dump truck if it were done you know, inside the barn. Um, <coughs> those are the same materials you see in hockey rinks. 
in weight rooms and gyms, uh, they are uh, highly, um, they can withstand a significant amount of, of punishment. They, they, they absorb a lot of energy and, and <coughs> powerful uh, sound. Um, so that's an ov overview of the physical um, conditions that we propose uh, for the property. Uh, I can start through the, um, the descriptions, the more the narrative descriptions of the plans um, are open to questions to the board. Um, five after eight, almost ten after eight, if you want to entertain questions on what's here, if you'd like me to proceed, uh, however you'd like me to proceed until 8.15 and you walk into the other. Um, given what Mr. Pondak had said earlier about quantities, um, I don't know that you've had a chance to discuss that with your client next, but certainly for the next meeting, um, having an idea of the turnover rate and the quantities that would be required would be useful for our discussions. Yeah, we did provide um, uh, an, a... And I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to go through all the materials. Oh, that's, because that's fine. We did provide a... Um, uh, a schedule of uh, an average deliveries by material, by size of truck, by the number of trucks, for example, firewood uh, on a weekly basis, for example, firewood during the hive season. Um, they receive four truck loads per week, okay. so less than one a day. Um, most of the firewood comes from Vermont. They, uh, we provided a copy of a letter from one of their suppliers, the Forester, under Vermont Environmental Law Act, Act 250, as it's known, <coughs> they are not allowed to leave their premises in Vermont before 7 o'clock in the morning. That means that they cannot get to the, the nursery until you know, midday, um, and they are in and out and gone. Uh, I do have, and I can show later, access to a YouTube video of how these trucks operate. They're actually very quiet. They discharge in small quantities at a time. Um, as, they, as it's sort of pushed out the back of the truck, there's no loading and dumping mechanisms. It's very quiet. So as they said, they would pull in, back in, offload. I think that the operation takes about a half hour or so to offload. It does take a little bit of time, but it's very quiet and out. And you have the capacity of those trucks, so you know how much firewood. We, we, know how, we, we know the volumes that of all of the materials that they've received on an annual basis. Okay. Um, what I don't know and we'll check is, is more clearly is the, is the turnover, is how, what's the outgo mm -hmm. um, um, on, a, on a daily and weekly basis. But we do know how much is received on a... Okay. That would, that would, <clears throat> that would answer some of the questions. I'm not sure it isn't in here as well. I didn't renew it. But, uh, Again, it would be a good idea to know what you'd like to have as a maximum allowable limit of each of these materials. Because, you know, if you say we get three deliveries a week, well, like you just said, I don't know the outflow, so how much does that back up? Do you call off deliveries or, you know, when you get a maximum amount of firewood, mulch, stone dust, et cetera? I mean, I think that plays into what Mr. Prondek said. I mean, how is he going to decide whether it's over or under if we have no? Maximum limit. Any one time or No, I think um, I think uh, Joe's comments were many of them were well taken, and they took careful notes. To what What about facilities for employees? Uh, there are use them. Um, bathroom in the garden shop, and there's a bathroom upstairs in the office above the garden shop, and those are available for employees. The, uh, I guess it would be the east side. When you put in the fence and there's a 30 foot buffer, if you will, between the fence and the property line, and we did walk out there and try to recall, is there a swale there that will catch the uh, flow and run off, which will then send it out to... Uh, yeah, we'll, when we get into the, the drainage details more specifically, um, on March 4th, I guess it is, the, there, is a, there is a swale here, um, and in fact, I think I showed them a photograph and I have them, we go back after, where they, 
they, they built a retaining wall along this side and widened out um, here so that there it is quite a depression between <coughs> what's on this side and this side. The low point at 182 is down in here, comes back up. And so over. As, you, as you run down that line, within the Bayer property, there's a lower elevation yes. than on the property line of Nevada's. Correct. And there's a sep separately, there's a natural low point um, you know, the full size plant. Um, this is the natural low point. Um, 184, 182, 182 again. This is lower than 182. This is quite a large area. And, and so it's possible to, to design the adjustments to the drainage to bring it here, detain it, and then we've been working in conjunction with the town DPW yard to tie into the town's uh, drainage. Yeah, the surface that. runoff, the intention of the drainage plant is to be caught in that swale right. and set it up there. Right. And except in unusually high rain events, um, it should be well, pretty well contained. Uh, and would be, uh, there'll be some stormwater separators in there to catch it, clean it before it uh, goes in. There's a, they're working on a plan to uh, jet, pump jack a pipe underneath the wall. Uh, this is a historic stone wall along here. They go under the wall and tie the catch basin just, off the, just opposite uh, Harlem, Harlem Street. Just and then where does, where does it go? Does it go down to Cooks Brook? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, two questions then. One is on that, would there be any treatment in that? Yes. So the step right sector or something? Closing, uh, right now uh, we're proposing a catch basin um, with uh, a row of Caltex uh, okay. underneath and I had a brief conversation with John Thompson, the engineer, and we're looking to sit down next week and discuss uh, the overflow connection as well um, and what storm event uh, they're looking to handle. Right now, we've designed it for a 25-year storm and uh, buffering the peak flows. I haven't analyzed the 100 yet, but we can certainly see what that does. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, the stormwater questions will be answered next week. Okay. And just a quick question. Ed. On this driveway to the right of what you said was Josh Oldfield's house. I think it was originally here for uh, purposes of <coughs> storage of equipment off hours. No, we had the, one of the conversations that Josh had with uh, Pam Lapori was um, the notion of a set of uh, parking spaces here mm -hmm. for this for the storage of equipment um, and. I think that was that was problematic, and so we looked at moving it over here. So, what's the purpose of that driveway now? Is that is is there an ability to eliminate some of that, or this this part, just this portion? There, um, yeah, the, 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 they this is still available to them um, for purposes of some nursery grow out, um, some uh, storage of small pieces of of equipment like plows off-season store. They have two snow plows. They, they, do, they do plow snow, but they only have two plows. Um, and so a couple of plows, you know, um, bobcat uh, equipment, not the bobcats themselves. Okay. So if not stored in here because it's not seasonal room, um, just over here in a, shield, in a shielded area, the fence does come beyond there, would not be visible, and there would be, wouldn't be any operations going on. But this is not proposed to be an, an, a live operating theater, if you will. It's intended to be uh, quiet um, storage with some nursery uh, grow out. Okay. Um, now, the planning board has to determine. We're going to we're going to continue go to the continued Falcone hearing, and we're going to uh, um, take that to conclusion. And we're going to continue this. What? We're going to continue the fair. Well, the question is, should we continue this to March 4th, or should we continue it to after the Falcone hearing, knowing that we would have to spend at least an hour uh, to make it worthwhile to make people wait? Stay through that. Yeah. Uh, my 
own feeling is that we should continue it to March 4th. But if people would like to resume after Falcone taking a, you, you know, we don't know how long it will take, uh, but take a chance that there'll be some, uh, some uh, extra time there. Yeah, I, my, only, my only hesitance to not continuing to later tonight is that we have people in the audience who probably want to speak to it. If they have a reservation that can be answered at March 4th, it would be nice to get it out tonight and get a resolution to it. But that's... You could ask how many people want to speak tonight, and then that would give and do they want to stay? And do they, and do they <laughs> want to stay? Yeah, I think I mean, that's a reasonable question. So would they rather come back March 4th? But I agree we should... It's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm, I, I think that's a great solution. Okay. There's no limit on the time for the Falcone game. No. I think we should go to March 4th. Well, I, I do too. So, uh, should we, should uh, we, what? We're should just we, saying we should check in with the people who have come to speak and see if well, they would rather wait. Well, we know, that we know, we know at least things. three people want to speak. Right. And uh, I think they're going to want to speak at some length. Four people. Well, no. What I'm saying is it's an incomplete application, so I think it probably makes sense for him to complete the application, his presentation, and then. So I, I think we're fine with, with waiting till the 4th, if okay. we're not worth that. That's, no, that's worth a lot. I mean, that's what we're, we're, we're gauging. Do we make you sit here for an hour? And I mean, if, if you're happy coming back on the 4th, I think we're so happy with having you come back. Things that may be questioned tonight by the people that speak may be answered by March 4th. That's right. I, that's right. Uh, if, if I may, I think it would be... Um, it would be very helpful for the process to continue back tonight to go through quickly the materials that were presented to see whether or not there are questions that need to be answered so that we have the ability to respond to at least questions that arise on the third and then move forward from there uh, on the evening of the third. I think, um, you know, if it's, if the Falcone hearing is going goes lo later than reasonably expected, then we can revisit the issue at a time certain. But I would request that the board... You, know, you have to remember that you gave this material to the board yesterday, two I'm days ago. Tonight, yeah. Tonight. I, 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 um, and, and, but asking the board to, to formulate all its questions without having read it, uh, on the basis of a precy that you uh, you advance uh, is is not going to bind the board. I, I understood. understood. I, mean, I, I did not receive my materials until last night, and I had an evening meeting, so I didn't receive them till late. You know, I didn't get them till I got back. So I have not had a chance to. I mean, I flipped through and saw that you sent us materials, but I haven't had a chance to review them. So. Leave it to the board's discretion. I, I think it would be helpful to I, I, some level of presentation tonight, but I would. Um, well, I mean, the convenience of the people who are here is a, a, uh, uh, a, I don't know how long Falcone is going to last, but I think it's going to last for an hour, at least, at least or an hour. Possibly that'd be 9.20, and then going another hour would be 10.20, and, uh, uh, it, how, how much time would you need to go through the materials? I think um, I could go through the materials in about 15 minutes, and then we could just go through mm -hmm. very basic descriptions. I think they're, they are, I tried to do it in a very simple, easy to follow format. Um, highlight some specifics of what we've got. I, I appreciate completely the difficult situation that we put you in. Material and, and I t accept full responsibility for that. Um, having said that, I think that a, a brief overview of what's in it can help inform a little bit your own review of it. And then, if there are any immediate questions that, that pop, then certainly those are things that we can uh, be prepared to respond to. All right, let's, uh, uh, Mr. Don, what do you think? What do I think? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're, you're asking the fourth or later tonight. I, I think the fourth makes sense. You're I think the fourth to makes hour. sense too. For an hour to, you know. I I, I don't I don't. Uh, anyone contrary minded? I mean, if it's only fifteen minutes, I don't mind waiting, but I don't 
want people to have to sit and wait for uh, an hour. I don't, I don't see problem. how you yeah. can summarize an, a, I, I mean, you saw Mr. Pondak going through the zoning. He took more than 15 minutes, and he just, he just raised a few of them. Uh, he was very comprehensive. I also don't want to delay Falcone any longer, because they've already waited. All right. Yeah, We're going to, uh, I think that I have a feeling and a sense of the board that we are going to continue this until the 4th. At what time, Bill? You have a zone here at 6.45, so 7.15, I think, is what you said. <laughs> okay, 7.15. 7.15, yeah. and we will, we will spend some time here, uh, or then, some time here then. Thank okay, you. thanks. Uh, no, now. In, in the event of requesting, uh, making them wait three or four more minutes, could we have a three or four minute break for the planning board, since this could be an hour or longer? Uh, we, can, we, can, we can take a three or four. If you know, if I'm not we leaving. understand that at 8.30 we're going to resume. I'm happy to resume at 8.27. We only need three members for this one. Thank you, I move we take a minute a but break we're, till 8:30 we're please. We're recessed for till 8:30. Excellent. Thank you. I'll be back. Adjourned. I thought it was a uh, uh, a great time to adjourn, but then I I heard that there were people who I uh, cut off at the knees and didn't allow them to speak, and I'm sorry. Um, if you know, I if I I didn't, I didn't know that uh, uh, people were waiting to speak. It seemed to me that it was a good time to, uh, a good time to, uh, to break. But tonight, we're going to, uh, we're going to finish the hearing. And uh, uh, so with that said, uh, Ms. McKetrick. Good evening. Mary McKetrick, I'm the attorney for the Fulfett County LLC, and we're back here before you tonight to provide some additional information which we have sent to the board. Um, at the last meeting, uh, there was a request that we submit our traffic generation statistics, which we had engaged Howard Stein Hudson to produce back in November in order to understand the traffic that would be generated by this use. We submitted that report to the planning board, and you should all have it. And we also um, asked for an opinion from Howard Stein Hudson about how those traffic generation statistics um, integrated with the study that had been done of traffic and parking in East Milton Square. In other words, you know, did that traffic study take into account additional uses that might generate additional traffic? And would the impact of this use be significantly different from what was anticipated by that study? And they just wrote a one-page letter, but the, the, the letter states that they had prepared a technical memorandum studying the restaurant use that indicated that the restaurant could generate 540 trips on an average weekday, 566 on an average Saturday during the peak hours. Project would generate approximately 54 B vehicle trips during the weekday evening peak and 66 during the Saturday peak. Uh, and the project traffic, according to this letter, and this would be my understanding too, would be dispersed throughout the roadways surrounding the restaurants. So it's not all coming in on one road. Um, the number of, when, when the traffic is dispersed throughout East Milton Square, the number of project-related vehicle trips expected to impact specific intersections is going to be less than that total trip generation that I just read. And this sort of increase was considered in the East Milton Square Improvement Project. They, the study uh, considered potential traffic growth from real redevelopment projects. And this proposed restaurant use is accounted for as part of the general background growth that was used for that uh, study in that project. Um, I did read the, go back and read the traffic study again, and 
I sent a letter to the board about a couple of other possible uses, but I also mentioned in that letter that in the East Milton Square parking and traffic study, they recommended restaurant use as one of the, the better uses for this area for um, new growth. And I think as we've already mentioned to you, the, um, the planning document the town has just produced also talks about restaurant use as a, as a favored um, use for East Milton Square. We do have not our regular traffic engineer, but a traffic, I mean, our regular engineer. We do have our engineer here tonight. And I actually had intended to have him talk about traffic, but that's the main reason we're back here and I wanted to give you the summary. Um, if you'd like, I can ask him to address the board. I think that uh, would be excellent. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, my name for the record is Jeff Haston. I'm a civil engineer with Morse Engineering. Um, at the previous hearing, Gregory Morse from my firm presented a portion of the project. Um, I will try not to reiterate too much of what Marion McEttrick um, just, just um, gave you the information on. Um, but since the last hearing, it's my understanding that the project was continued in order to provide additional information on trip generation and exactly how many trips are expected to be generated from this property and what impact that would have on the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, that is exactly what we did. Howard Stein Hudson Associates was retained. Um, in my opinion, they're the perfect firm to do this analysis because they are so familiar with this neighborhood. Um, they've done a very significant amount of studies um, as they're working for the town of Milton and with the Mass DOT to come up with a master improvements plan for this area. Um, as was mentioned before, they do one of their recommendations was that this property would be developed as a restaurant and in their calculations they have a base flow model and they, they anticipated the development of this property. So that is part of the reason why they, um, that's part of their reasoning why um, this has already been factored in, it's into previous studies. Um, In an email, two letters have been submitted. One, um, one was prepared back in November 11th of 2014. That had not been put on the records. Um, November 17th, I'm sorry. It is on the record now, it's been submitted. And a follow-up letter on February 11th. And I also have correspondence between Kerry Pike, who is a PE with Howard Stein Hudson Associates, and the town planner, William Clark. And in this email she states, I believe you are correct that the effects are de minimis as to traffic and parking. They are providing parking and the trip numbers are small and would have, would have been accounted for in the East Milton Square analysis and design through the background growth rate. So they are stating that they've done their study and the, in, the, this increase in flow is going to be de minimis. I would go on to say that their calculations are aggressive, the, the number of trips that they're pr predicting are higher than I would expect. They're kind of a worse case. Um, they, they perform their report um, in compliance with the ITA trip generation manual, with, which is a standard. They call the restaurant a code 9, 931, which is a quality restaurant, which I would agree with. And their numbers I would agree with, with the exception that they don't account for uh, pedestrian traffic. Um, traffic that's going to arrive by public transportation. There is a bus stop right in front of the property. And pass by traffic. One of the notes, this is a page from the ITA manual, uh, ITE, which I'll pass around. For the, and it states that all land uses in the 800 and 900 series are entitled to a pass by trip reduction of 60% if less than 50,000 square feet, uh, which this is. So I guess in, in my conclusion, um, I, I, I would agree that the effect will be de minimis. Can I ask a question on that point? So, so that answers the question I had, which is, I think, so these, these numbers you're showing us, the 540 weekday daily trips and the uh, 566 Saturday daily trips, these are new trips. Yeah, and it includes both in and out. Understood. I understand that piece of it. But so that would be... Trips, cars that are not already on road, these are new cars coming for this purpose only that would not have been there otherwise? That's correct. Okay. In uh, the Howard Stein Hudson report, they, they do address walking, bicycling, and transit. They say the ITE provides 
estimated total of, of basically urban settings well served by transit. So they did just that. Um, I was under the impression the um, the numbers were the overall. I can I'd and have to read back. He gives you you know six thousand square foot restaurant. They give you trips per square feet, but then apparently they've got a bit that as well within that may only provide for urban settings and okay. adjusting for public transportation. I, walking. I don't I don't doubt you on that. I'd have to oh, take sure, a second yeah. look at it. Um, the they certainly do not take into account the uh, this, the possible sixty percent reduction. Um, so I, I still think they even with that information they I would still agree. Where are you? Uh, what are you referring to, Mike? Why don't you bring it to his attention? Uh, it's the Alexander Hudson Technical Memorandum of November 17th, bottom paragraph, the first page. ICE provides data to estimate the total number of unadjusted vehicle trips associated with the project. In an urban setting well served by transit, adjustments are necessary to account for other travel modes, such as walking, bicycling, and transit. But I don't see that they make those yeah, adjustments. She's saying they are necessary. They're necessary, but they haven't actually made them because when you go over to the next page, they're doing the, vehicle, they're doing the IT, um, vehicular rates. Well, I, I don't know that the uh, Institute of Traffic Engineers doesn't address it. Urban city well served by. No, they don't. That's the point. Okay. They don't address it because that's what they're but saying. If they don't address it. The because, traffic would be greater. No, what they're saying is that IT is, is giving this data to do the number of unadjusted vehicular trips in an urban setting, adjustments are necessary I, to the ITE numbers. Correct. Yeah. But without the adjustments, I'd be using higher numbers. They are, topics. exactly. That's numbers exactly would be lower with the adjustments. If they, if they made the adjustments, the numbers would be lower, no, which is consistent with what he's so saying. There are no, <laughs> there, are no <laughs> there are no half intersections, is what you're saying. Of course, yeah. very it, the, the, well, it's, it's, it's pretty yeah. clear. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thanks. Does the Church Street intersection have a number, a ladder next to it with Adam Street? Does it have a letter? I, I don't like know. Like you get A, service. B, C, D, F. The level no. of service. The level. Um, I believe they submitted that. No. They, call, they call Adam Street a principal arterial road, and they call Church Street a secondary. I don't know if it's an A, B, or C. Uh, was there a level of service on it? No. Okay. Yeah. That's, I just wonder. There was some information that was supposed to have the A, B, C, grading. Yeah, just the level of service was, was done street. at um, Granite and Adams. Uh, what are Adams the levels and there? And what? Bryant. Oh, so it, doesn't, it wasn't done at that church? It street wasn't done Adams. just at that one. It was done on Adams Street in different places. But it Granite wasn't Adams. done at that light? There. Correct. And of course, uh, one of our problems is that we don't, with the Adam Street thing, is uh, we, we have the information that there is going to be a new traffic light system that is right. going to make it 50% better than it currently is. What he told us is it doesn't, it doesn't talk to the rest of the system, it's on its own. But it will talk to the rest but of the system, will. Yes. But it will, yeah. but it will. I mean, we, we have the promise that uh, Adam Street is going to have an increased capacity. I said it's going to be better. I never said it was going to be 50% better. I did say it would be better. <laughs> okay. Now, any other questions? No. Do we have questions in the audience for the traffic engineer? Jeff we have a question. Come up, sir, and uh, uh, ask the question. Marty McDonald for Mechanic Street. I have a question. When that study was done, what was the date on that? Bill? November 14th. What year? 2014. Thank you. 2014, last November. Yeah. And the updated memo was um, February 11th. February 11th, yeah. That's pretty current. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mary, do you have uh, anything further? Thank you. 
I didn't have, uh, I have one additional point. It's not really new, but I wrote a letter to the board for this last hearing. Um, just summarizing um, a little bit more information about possible alternative uses. Um, one of them I selected was the theater use because this used to be a 600 seat theater. This building had a, a theater in it. Um, that theater used to have two showings a night and it used to have occasionally have matinees. Most of the work, of the, the business at the theater would be in the evening at approximately the same time that a restaurant like this would be busy. So I did some estimates just based on the town's parking requirements of what parking would be required for a theater like that. Of course, it turns out it's a discretionary decision by the Board of Appeals. It's a determination just like the restaurant determination. The Board of Appeals would have had to decide what parking was necessary for that use. Using the ratio of um, 2.5 to 1, I had 200 plus parking spaces that would have been required for the theater use off street because it would be, it's been discontinued for a number of years, it would be like a new use. I also looked at retail use. Um, this is a two-story building. It could be converted to a two-story retail use. I estimated it's a 6,000 square foot footprint. Conservatively, I talked to the Falcones about it, that possibly you could have 8,000 8, square feet of retail use and that the number of parking spaces that would require would be required for such a use would be approximately 32. It's all speculative. We don't really know how much internal retail space you could create. The significant um, fact about retail use is that it would be, it would involve a lot more in and out car trips. It would be all day, it would be into the evening. Um, so spe I, can, I speculate that it would, it would be busier than the restaurant use all, and it would be more continuous. Um, it's, we didn't ask for trip generation statistics for those uses because we're not proposing them, but I thought it would be worthwhile to at least um, give you those estimates of what parking would be required because it does give you some idea of traffic impact. Um, and I think when you think about this use and the fact that it's in a commercial district, that you have to consider that there will be a commercial use at this site. And that these are probably two of the more, these are two possible uses only in that there was a theater there before. The retail use is the other use that you see in the square other than restaurants. Um, and so there is going to be, whatever the use is, there's gonna be an issue of parking and traffic. And so I, I just reiterate what I've said in the hearings previously, which is this restaurant is, is a high quality restaurant. It will, people will stay for a considerable period of time when they come here for dinner. There will be good management of the parking. There will be, if permitted, there will be the use of valet parking, which will help to control uh, and place um, clients' cars or patrons' cars in the proper off-street parking. Um, the restaurant management intends to make uh, use of, of signs and website directions, and they will require that their employees park in the designated parking spaces in the square that have to be paid for by um, businesses. Uh, in addition, um, you have to consider that for a restaurant use, some of the patrons are going to come from the neighborhood and they are not going to drive, they're going to walk. Some of the patrons are already going to be in the square. They'll come there to do retail shopping, they'll come there for on, uh, some other purpose and then they'll come to the restaurant. So not every restaurant patron is a new trip being generated by a car. That's why I think uh, the, the estimates we've provided to you are conservative estimates and we've had them evaluated um, by the same firm that did the traffic study in East Milton and they've given you the answer that this should not be and this use will not overburden the overall traffic situation in the square. So, you know, in summary, I just would like to say there are still some traffic and parking issues that neighbors are going to be concerned about in residential areas. This hearing has really highlighted what some of those problems are, including the problem of retail uh, customers parking in residential parking areas, residential um, streets. We can't solve that problem, but we'll certainly support uh, looking at solutions. And we'd like to, we would, I personally would work with neighbors to look for possible solutions to that problem, and I think there are some solutions. 
So I don't, I'm not going to summarize all of the evidence unless you want me to do that. I'd be glad to well, go through you, it all uh, if you want. Uh, we, we can take a pass on that, thanks. But a question. Yes. Sure. Uh, Mr. Clark uh, appeared before the Board of the Selectmen, actually, and I, of course, always watch the Selectmen mm -hmm. because they are just very watchful people. And uh, in any event, he said the Board of Appeals is holding off its decision so that they can see what the Planning Board does. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a uh, nice of them. Uh, is that right? They, they want our, uh, uh, yes. they, they like our decision. Okay, I, I, well, I, I command performance. <laughs> incorporate your, they want to incorporate sections of your special permit in their decision. All right, well, we'll uh, uh, our site plan approval in their special permit. Yes, sorry. All right, uh, okay. So that's what the Board of Appeals would like to have happen. Who? Can I just interrupt for one minute? I think I just want to I think we probably make sure that should make that point uh, on the question that was raised about the date on the memo. The memo is dated the 14th. It appears the traffic. Uh, I think the question was about the Milton traffic study, the original traffic study, and that was 2012, according to the memo submitted on the 14th. So I just wanted to make that clarification. So they do. They the original study was June. June. <coughs> I think it was June 2012. Just says 2012. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't indicate that there was another study done after that. It just in the case the numbers they used from the study they did in 2012. It was also the uh, right. They did that, and the same company is also the one doing the uh, design engineering for the study. So they've yeah. been back. It, some of the projections are projections, so it's it's it, somewhat irrelevant the date. But the original study, which probably studied the actual trips. They walked you through intersections was done in 2012. For the whole square, yeah. Right, just yeah. wanted to make the exactly. clarification. No, 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 that's reasonable. Absolutely. You were saying? You were I'm asking saying. for questions? I think you were asking for questions. Oh, I was, yes. I, I, uh, uh, I've apologized for cutting people off last time, but if anyone came back, I, I, <laughs> the board is, uh, would be thrilled to hear you. Uh, and uh, anyone want to speak on this application? Yes, sir. Um, obviously, we have a, uh, an issue with the uh, parking because of right now we have tons of snow. I think we need a plan in place that they're going to haul this off of site. There's no room in East Milton Square. My house got buried, buried with snow on the front lawn. The town just dumped it up there. I'm sure I'm going to have to reseed it because of the salt. Um, I don't want to see them emptying out this parking lot and dumping it on top of my lawn, too. They can't do that. Can they? Where are they going to put it? And if they do have snow like we have now, it has to go because they're losing parking spaces. Losing parking spaces, where are they going to park? Well, if I plow my driveway, they're going to be parking in my driveway to go to the restaurant. So, so I, think a plan, I, think like a plan, I think a plan needs to be in place that the snow is taken out of there, trucked out. So Can I make snow? a comment on that as the, as the developer? Uh, it's Mr. Sure. Falcone. I'd like to answer that question. We all well, know that. To to introduce yourself. And, uh, I'm a Robert uh, Falcone from Falcone Development. We already own two buildings in East Milton Square. We've owned four Franklin Street since 1970. We do all our plowing. Now we sub it out to a contractor. We send loaders in there, and we have right now, because of the storm on Tuesday, we're two, two stalls short. Tomorrow morning at 4 a.m., they're in there loading the snow and it's all gone. We've been doing that since we owned the building in 1970. Our new building in 450 Adam Street is all plowed back and there's plenty of room for snow. This plan also has a seven or a nine foot, I believe, oh, I'm right here. It's got a seven or a nine foot buffer. There's plenty of room to pile snow. And none of the town snow, we do a lot of, the town snow does come on your property as you own a driveway. Of course the town's gonna plow snow on your driveway. 
They can't have to put it somewhere. I don't think a parking lot church street is going to plow snow and go across Adam Street into your property, Mr. McDonald. This is not going to happen. It's a fair. We do it now. It's, it's a fair. It's, it's a fair concern. The town knows that. It's a fair concern. Fact, last week we had a load up and we plowed Franklin Street. My, my concern is just not uh, plowing it onto my property. That's not my concern. Okay. My main concern is that they're going to lose spots with the snow. It, we understand that. And that, that if, if we say snow. I, I would like to see a plan in place uh, in writing that it's going to be hauled out. If we say that the lot shall be kept free of snow or ice so that the authorized spaces are not obstructed, that should do it, shouldn't it? Well, if it need be to uh, take it off site there. To take it well, out. I mean, if need be, that would be up to them. They do it. They do it at the bank I, next I, door I, there. But, but we, we, I don't think uh, uh, can tell them they've got to truck their snow. We can uh, require that they keep it clear, but we don't necessarily. Have, we don't require. I, the I think that if we just say that uh, if if the parking lot shall be kept free of snow or ice, so that the authorized spaces are not obstructed, that. That, that that would be sufficient. That would yeah. do it. That would be sufficient. Absolutely. That's good point. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. I'm Peter Don. I live at 84 Franklin Street. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood for 10 years. I just had a question for the engineer on the trips. Um, I think it was 556 trips on a Saturday night, sounded like the maximum. What counts as a trip? Is it a round trip or is it a single trip? Single trip. One, one in, two is out. Okay. Um, and then just in terms of the dispersal of the, um, the flow of traffic through the neighborhood, um, you know, I think 556 trips down Adam Street is probably inconsequential. I don't know if any consideration was given to how that would, uh, some of that traffic would flow through the side streets. Through Church Street, Church Street, Franklin, and um, and some of the other streets as well. Uh, the majority of come up. The majority of the parking here will be handled by valet services. Mm -hmm. uh, we are providing a parking lot here, but it is limited in the number of spaces it provides. Um, the the main there will be a two two parallel spaces here are being reserved for valet drop off mm -hmm. in this area. And then the cars will be brought to these four lots. So they, there are four pro properties that are either owned by the applicant or okay. that they have agreements with. And um, this shows the this shows the, the route they'll take. Um, I've been informed that lot locations one and two alone have adequate mm -hmm. um, volume to hold all of the parking spaces. But just uh, we have the other two in. in we, we have no of them. Okay, and will folks be able to self park it too? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So if they're coming over from the other side of the bridge and they come down Boulevard Street, they cross over, they're going to have to do a U turn to be able to utilize the valet services? Um, I'm not sure how that works. I think you're going to go around Fenton Street, come out on Church and Language. But the, will the valet be on? The is not going to allow them to do U turns. To do U turns so on, on Adam Street? Yeah. Okay. Won't be allowed. They have to do a legal maneuver. Right. Um, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, anyone else? If no one else, I think. Well, that I just have one more problem. Okay. It's, it's, it's if it's just one more, that a, that will do it. it. It doesn't seem to be a lot of people. I think you've worn them all down in the neighborhood. Uh, congratulations. Think it's been the planning board that did it? I think that the, the Falcones have worn them down. So, uh, But at any rate, uh, there is a bus stop uh, at the corner of uh, Mechanic uh, uh, Church Street, as you come out of Church Street there in front of my property. That bus is a problem because it holds up all that traffic coming out of Church Street. Nobody can move. That bus stop needs to be moved. And nobody seems to want to address that issue. And I think it should be part of this whole project that that bus stop 
gets moved up the street where the street is wider. So when the bus Where do you think it should be moved to? It should be moved up towards the church because when they where the church is, you know. Here's, the, here's your house right here. Here's my house here. So it should be uh, this Quincy, this you can't do that. To towards Quincy. Of course we can. Towards Quincy. Towards Quincy. Okay, I, what yeah. about this? And the, reason, we, and, and, and the reason being, and the reason being because if you look at the road, Adam Street, it gets wider up there. The bus pulls over, cars can go by. Where it is, it's at a standstill. Nobody can move. I, it has to be part of this whole project. I, I think that, that given the fact that the uh, MBTA is the uh, uh, motive power here. So well, she just stepped down, so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> but, but, but we can, in this, say that we will recommend to the MBTA that they can say that they look into moving that bus stop. I think it's important. Okay, I think we can do that. We could recommend to the MTA, and I think that's probably a good thing to do. Bill has a good relationship with them. And look so the, whole, the whole planet of uh, East Milton Square, this should know. be part of that. Well, there might be a new director so, in April, so. Better, better call. Better call soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Move the bus stop to where the road is wider. Alex, I, we've got somebody <laughs> waving their hand to speak. Yes. I, I'm Debbie Elward, and I work for Falcone Properties. Um, just to, just to uh, ring our own bell here, I just want to tell you a comment that was just made about we've worn people down. We have done such a great job, and I'm just going to blow my own whistle here, at clearing our parking lots as well as the main road, Franklin Street. We've plowed it ourselves. Yeah. My sisters and I... We're out shoveling ourselves. After we've already done our own houses 10 times because snow plows do that to everybody. My grass as well, it's normal. But I just wanna say that one of those people that have come to this meeting and been negative towards us the entire time actually complimented us on how well our properties in East Milton were compared to everybody else in East Milton. She couldn't believe how great we take care of our stuff and asked us if she could park in our parking lot. And that was after she has, you know, every meeting tore us apart. Is that gonna take away from the restaurant, that parking space? He's got okay. to use the restaurant. You know, it just to toot our own whistle instead, you know, we've sat here very nice all week being torn apart. And, We've really done our job more than more than exceed. Okay, let's let's, let's uh, close the hearing and uh, uh, take a look at it. Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the, the public hearing on the Falcone application. Okay, do we have a second? We have a second. Do we have a discussion? No. No, no discussion. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. The hearing is closed. Now, I have. We reworked a draft decision, Thanks. which you should have copies of. I have a copy as well of some extra comments, just if you want to pass them out at the same time, so we can do it all at once. Oh, you have got some I, comments yeah, still? Yeah, I didn't get them to send okay, them Okay, that's good. So. Oh, is this one package? No, yeah, it's just one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same, state, same. it's just redlined. Thank so you. You've got red lines in this? Yep, as we go, you'll see them. Oh, I see them. Yep, there's they're not a lot, in a slightly not a lot of them. lighter. Yeah, there's not a they're lot. They're not actually red. Okay, uh, so, so want to page page page. Page. review them quickly? No, nope, that's fine. I'm good. Page Sorry. by page? Uh, we're going to do mine first. Yeah, let's do yours first. All right, on page four, yeah. um, I'd like to make a recommendation that we. Uh, amend the trash pickup language to allow for an adjustment as necessary as determined by the, uh, this should actually say Board of Health, not Planning Board. Uh, by the Board of Health. To minimize odors and rodent infestation. So just allowing us to increase that from more than once. Marion, do you want to come up, up to the table and uh, 
What section? And if you want to uh, chime in. in. Okay. Uh, this is in section A, mm -hmm. top of the page, just mm -hmm. in adding a sentence saying trash pickup schedule will be adjusted as necessary as determined by the Board of Health to minimize odors and rodent infestation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, page six, uh, section parking, section A. I just added in, was I'm not sure if I added this or, oh, okay. and was determined to be sufficient by the Zoning Board of Appeals. I've also got something under D about, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll go up to D, sorry. D, I changed consider to provide valet parking. Uh, and under parking, section A, I added at the end and was determined to be sufficient by the zoning board of schools. Where are you now? Sorry, page, page six. six, Alex. Oh, 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 oh. D oh, and uh, A. Provide, that's fine. Uh, ensures there'll be no substantive damage parking with the. The word disperse is misspelled there. It should be D I S P E R S E. Uh. Um, valet parking has to be approved by the traffic commission. So is this language adequately we certainly make recognizing that? that? We certainly make that uh, modification that it's uh, subject to approval, subject okay. to required approvals. At the end before the uh, semicolon? Mm -hmm. uh, we're okay with that, with the next making sure it's grammatically correct. Something looks wrong with it. Oh, what, what, it take a look at, take a look at a, uh, my draft and, 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 and see we, we have uh, uh, six. We don't know what the Zoning Board of Appeals is going to do quite yet. We assume they're going to say that, that X number of parking spaces. I'm fine with, with the changes you made as in place of what I've done. I mean, we both were thinking the right. same thought. Right. Mm -hmm. Yours is fine. Okay, what else? Uh, just a couple more. Um, page 7, 4D at the bottom. And I'd like to uh, require large truck vendors instead of just simply instructing them. Yeah. To, uh, <coughs> I think that's appropriate. Uh, page 8, E2. I just added full service for a restaurant. Yep. Page 9, number 7. Again, I require vendors using small trucks instead of direct. And I put a restriction in that delivery shouldn't be made between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. I want to get just, is that is that acceptable with the applicant? I want to just check the hours. but. Seemed like it was a pretty reasonable amount of time. Well, yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay. No. Don't do it now. And those are my only changes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I have a couple more recommendations from the meeting, though. I might as well do it now. Yeah. Um, I would like to add a condition that a construction management plan be submitted and approved by the building commissioner of the DPW. Yep. If you look on. Uh, there already. On nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. Page nine. Along the side. <laughs> ah, very good. <laughs> so we can use that language. That's perfect. Yep. Excellent. And um, we've already added the snow plan. We talked about the bus stop. I have one question, and that's with regard to the uh, park, the <coughs> questionable parking space here. There was a question about either striping or adding a bump out there. I wanted to have a discussion about whether this application should require a bump out or a line striping be put in front of uh, this driveway to prevent the left turning lane from blocking the uh, neighbor's access to get in and out of the driveway. That was a com that that came. I out. remember that was a comment. Yeah, yeah was, was that something? That. Is that something that can be addressed in this application, or is it something that sh I think it's, it's something that goes to the traffic road. commission? Right, right. Yeah. Road okay, so that's a traffic road. commission. Yeah, yeah, I would say. That's why I wanted to ask the question. I'll make a recommendation. And the same, same question with regard to the T. I have no objections to requesting that the T look at that 
bus stop and moving it. But yeah, I don't know that it, need, it belongs in the fine. permit, so but I think we should do it. Yes. Recommendation. That's fine. yeah. It doesn't hurt if you make it clear that it's just a recommendation. But I don't know that it's something that, I mean, the special permit is something that has to be enforceable against. Or rather, site plan approval. You got me mixed up with the special permits, Phil. The site plan approval is something that has to be enforceable on the person receiving the approval. Well, we we do want to recommend to the MBTA to move the bus. I agree. Off. I don't. I don't have okay, any so, question so, on that. So, I, I mean, if we can get uh, our planners to agree to uh, say it was the sense of the planning board that it should be moved, and send it off to whoever moves bus stops. You think we can do that, Bill? Can. Good. All right. And then so also get the traffic commission to look at striping a, that. Mention about that to the traffic left -hand so line. It's yeah. more or less independent of yeah. that. Yeah, because I knew exactly what she was talking about. We'll, I can see we'll, exactly we'll, why they're we'll doing that. Knowledge we learned through this, this process. Uh, recommendation to the traffic commission. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now, I have uh, a few changes uh, uh, on page one, five, uh, I, I say that all parking shall be in strict conformity with the written decision of the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what that's going to say, but we certainly want it to be. And, and later on, I say if, if this site plan approval contradicts the Board of Appeals, the Board of Appeals trumps. Mm -hmm. uh, Good, yeah. Now. Uh, A uh, question for you on three, Alex. Page three. Yeah. D1, you have the applicant will provide, but you have elsewhere you've changed all the wills to shalls. Oh, well, the will is... Uh, uh, so I'm double-checking. The will is not a shall because uh, we, we get into the shalls. That's why I thought I would just double-check. This, this, this should be a will. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we need capitalized protection for adjoining premises, do we? No. Not if it's not a defined term. I think that we can make that small. Mm -hmm. uh, by, by, by providing the following site plan features, and then we get... Into we, the shall. Then we okay. start shall, shalling them. <laughs> and as you can see that on Let's page four... <laughs> shall the heck out of them. <laughs> Everything is uh, uh, becomes a requirement, mm -hmm. and on page five, everything becomes uh, well. A lot of stuff becomes a requirement. Yeah. Uh, the traffic circulation we left alone because it just describes what they did. Right. On page six, I talk about uh, uh, implementing the valet the valet scheme if it's if it's feasible to do that, if practical and feasible, which would mean that the selectmen would have to weigh in if they if it were to be done. So on so that, that actually takes care of the concern about the subject about the to approvals. required approvals. So and we're going to so you change uh, disperse to disperse. With a P as opposed to a B, yes. Yes. Where's that? D. Oh, uh, disperse. Yes. <laughs> how do you how do you spell disperse? D I S P E R S. D E. D E. P E R S. D E. -E. 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 I don't know. Disperse. All right. Okay. So that will now read: Applicant shall require a valet parking plan in collaboration with the Milton Traffic Commission to further disperse traffic to yet another location from a valet station on Adams Street, as evidenced in the VPNE Parking Solutions Valet Parking Plan, and shall implement if it practical and feasible. Shall we also add to the word "approved"? There, do we need to reference that? It wouldn't be feasible if it weren't approved. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I took out traffic impact will be mitigated by the site being located within the business district because I didn't think that would actually mitigate the traffic. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, so I took it out. Uh, okay, so you're just leaving it as a statement. Right. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, and uh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the, the temporary and permanent signs, I, I say, as authorized and reasonably necessary because uh, they can't just put up sandwich boards <laughs> without going to you, Bill. Selectman. Selectman. Yeah. You have a, uh, an extraneous comma under VA. Second line approved comma, that comma needs to come out. What? Second line of A under yeah. parking. You've got, yes. you need to take out the comma after approved. Okay. Really? Oh, yes, because you got rid of the first, it was a parenthetical clause, and then you got oh. rid of it. Yes. That's right. That's exactly, that was, yeah. Uh, so if we go to page seven, the, the sewage plans, uh, I say applicant has submitted detailed plans for disposal of sewage and for drainage of surface water at the site. Yeah. And then I say such plans shall be approved by the town's DPW. Is that what we want, Bill? Yes. That's what I thought. Then we say there's adequate sewer capacity, but we don't need a letter from the town engineer to say that. We already have one. But well, we're sure we do, but we don't have to reference it. You can put it in the file. Uh, is there going to be a storm? Should stormwater management plan be small again? Is it going to be a separate document? It will be. Then it should be capitalized. You going to do one of those? Stormwater management plan? Yeah. It's required. Oh, you've got one. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. I did. That was the first meeting. All right. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Wasn't that long ago? Wasn't <laughs> me. <laughs> it's, it's all relative. <laughs> okay. Okay, we've got a, a little grease, sure. grease, uh, uh, clean, safe, odor-free condition. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems reasonable. We've got uh, the wooden enclosure and the concrete pad. That's good. Yep. And then compliance with their design. Yeah. I didn't know what uh, uh, the unit density was, so I took it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I said it was acceptable, but I, I'm still not exactly sure what it is. Well, it's being lowered. I say unit density and proximity of adjacent buildings to each other are acceptable, and I think that's a fair statement. Uh, Then I've taken out that we've reserved the specific power to amend. If there is a statement later on that the building inspector and uh, the building inspector and someone else can, and the Board of Health can, can come in if they find conditions that need to be changed. Okay. Uh, and then once again, we the valet station needs to be approved by the selectman at the end, bottom of page eight. Now on uh, page nine, we've got uh, the construction management plan. I guess we should, I'm not sure how we want to number this. Mm. Do we want to make it, uh, I think we probably want to make it uh, 12. Yeah, I would say so, right before you get to the site plan approval. And then the paragraph you wrote just now on the uh, snow uh, management uh, snow should be removal. 13. The snow removal will be 13, yeah. And then site plan approval will be 14. Right, so 12 becomes 14, 13 becomes 15. 14 times 16, 15, 17. This is pretty easy to do. <laughs> yeah, until you try to Microsoft Word and Microsoft Word gets confused. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put in snow removal. And that is, uh, once again, I, I, in 14, I talked about strict compliance with the written decision of the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm and nothing herein shall be construed to the contrary. 
Uh, yep. So, and with those changes combined with Brian's changes, uh, it seems to me that we've got a uh, site plan approval which addresses the issues that have been identified. And as I've made clear, we don't have any power to turn down this application. We have to make sure that they have, uh, um, they've done what they can to make it as good an application as possible. And I think they have. And I think the site plan approval of, um, will, <coughs> I think it, it, it touched the bases and it uh, should be approved. Are you looking for a motion? Uh, yeah, I think so. In that case, I move that we grant site plan approval to Falcone Properties, LLC, 4 Franklin Street, Milton, Mass., as so written and amended tonight. I second. Okay, any discussion? All I want to say is I think this is... Um, a uh, good thing for East Milton and for the town of Milton and uh, the Falcone properties and the Falcone family should be commended for coming forward with such an exciting project. I had a look at what they've done already and uh, it's made a real difference to the square. I know that there will be in the short term some traffic and parking problems as things get worked out and obviously as changes in East Milton Square happen but I think this is a real positive for the town so looking forward to it. Thank you very much. All right. All in favor? Aye. So it is uh, approved. Now, Emily. Yes. We're going to. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Wrong we're Emily. going to try and uh, uh, put this together tomorrow and have it available for signature or 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 Monday. I, I mean, we probably have it available for signature next week. So yes. tomorrow. It's, uh, Mine is all in. Monday's a holiday, so early next. Okay, week. so we'll probably get by mid by, by midweek we will have we will have a, a, a document ready to uh, for people to come in and sign. We we've, we've voted it. Uh, uh, Thank you. We've got the text. Uh, oh, excuse uh, me. They'll sign it and then file it with the town clerk probably on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And I will give you this, and I will. Come in and consult with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Now it's time for the town planner's report, isn't it? Thank you. Those other people left, unfortunately. What? I said those other people left, unfortunately. Yep. Oh, you mean you wanted to spend another uh, uh, another hour? Uh, here you are, Emily. No, I, 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 I approve of ending meetings by 9.30. I, I like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was going to let Mike or uh, Brian do it Motion this time. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, that's a non-debatable uh, if we have a second. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The planning board is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>